Hello everybody, my name is Alex Merced and I'm a developer advocate here at Dremio and today what I want to do is take you through a demonstration of the Dremio Arctic Catalog and how it introduces data as code. When we think about data as code, this is a new trend in the data world where essentially we're bringing many of the practices that we're used to in the world of software development uh, with tools such as Git where we can isolate our code by being able to code on branches by being able to version control and be able to like you know revert or um, reset branch uh, reset our commits, uh, being able to govern who can control um, who has access to pull and push what code uh, via the tools that we have. Um, basically, that's essentially what we're bringing over to data. Okay, so essentially that idea of being able to isolate version control and governance to your data. Okay, and in this case, using a open source tool called Project Nessie that powers the Dremio Arctic Catalog, uh, which brings you all the awesome features of, Dr of Project Nessie as a service, plus so much more. So we're going to kind of go through all of that today, and I'm going to take you through a demonstration of the Dremio Arctic Catalog. Okay, so the Dremio Arctic Catalog is a data catalog, and is a data catalog that works, of course, with Dremio Sonar, the query engine, but also works with other engines such as Spark, Flink, Presto, and more. Okay, so basically, you're able to keep your data consistent wherever your data lives. So let me go here, I'm here on my uh, Dremio dashboard and you can see here I'm connected to all sorts of, source of uh, sources of data. So when you're using Dremio Sonar you can not only just connect to your Dremio Arctic catalog which you see here under the data as code. I have several different Arctic catalogs that I'm uh, connected to but I can also connect to different meta stores like uh, AWS Glue which I have connected here and I can connect to all sorts of different object storage and many other places like databases. So again, I have all sorts of different sources I can connect to. Okay, one of the beauties of the Dremio platform, I basically can use my, anyone can bring in the data from anywhere and consume it anywhere. It's the open data lake house, right? Okay, but using a Dremio Arctic catalog is easy as adding it to, uh, here on Dremio Sonar, as easy as just clicking on sources, choosing Arctic, okay, and then basically clicking here and saying, hey, I want a new catalog. Okay, and you now have a new catalog right away. I could also go over here to new project or go to my projects and say to look at my Arctic catalogs and then create a new catalog from here as well. Okay, so I have several options on how to manage my catalogs, okay, or how to create them. But once I have that catalog here, like I have this Arctic catalog that I've called Arctic, um, I have a folder for our demo today, okay, over here on here. And we have these three data sets. So let me just kind of walk you through what's about to happen. We are a company that basically coordinates people who would like to be a virtual assistant with people who need a virtual assistant. So these assistants that want to be contracted out are under our assistance table. And our customers are under our customers table. Okay, so these are our dimension table. And then we have our fact table, uh, the sales table that basically documents all our sales and which assistant provided the service for which customer along with how much we made etc um, so what we want to do is we want to ingest the February sales data so what we're going to do is we're going to head over to our Dremio Sonar SQL runner where I can run SQL queries okay and this is a great IDE experience okay so you have all your favorite IDE uh, features here such things as like multiple cursors uh, dark mode light mode autocomplete also great features when it comes to writing your SQL um, and then you also have here where you can easily grab any of your sources so like let's say I want to like inject X source so let's say I want to grab one of the sources for today and just put it in my query I can drag and drop it like that so that way I don't have to type out the whole namespace and another way uh, the Dremio SQL sonar SQL runner saves you time is you can pre-write queries or templates for queries that you plan on writing a whole lot or you writing a whole lot and saving them as scripts Okay, so essentially all the steps for our exercise today, I have saved as different scripts. So okay, so basically when I wanted to set up the sample data for today, I had a script just for that. Okay, that basically creates all our data sets today. And again, just to show you that you can create scripts as well to basically make your life easier. And again, I can run multiple queries in a script. And now we get to where we are right now, where we're going to begin our exercise. Okay, so the idea is I'm going to ingest this February sales data and what I'm going to want to do is isolate the work that I'm going to do to ingest that data. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a branch 
And then I'm going to make sure that I do my work in that branch by using the use branch statement that basically says, hey, going forward, any queries past this query will be in the context of that branch. Okay, then I'm going to basically copy over my or ingest my my February sales data, you know, um, and then we're going to do is we're going to merge that February sales data with our sales table. So that way it's all all there. And then we're going to show you that it's isolated by one running a query of the count of tables from our branch and then running it from the main branch. That's the production branch that our data consumers would be querying. Okay, to show you that, hey, look, those changes have been isolated. They have not affected our main branch. Our main branch still only has X number of records and so forth. So I have all these queries that I had saved in a script all ready to go. And all I have to do is hit run. Okay, and it's going to run each of those queries one by one. And again, it's going to create a tab for each query as I go. So that way I can easily see the results of each query by just clicking here and here. Okay. Now, one thing you always want to keep in mind is you want to make sure that your cursor is at the beginning because that's where it's going to start querying. So let me run that again. Okay. And there you see like all the jobs are up for, for being queried. Okay. And I can see there's a spot, a tab for each of the queries that are in this script. So it's running through them. So again, basically switch branches or created the branch. It's using the branch. It is now pulling in the data. Okay. It is now uh, merging the sales. Now it's running the count queries. Okay. So that way we have our two counts and then we'll be able to see the results of these queries. Okay. So I can already see the results of the first count. Okay. Oh, that's over here. Okay. And you can see when we queried our, when we queried the count of records in our branch. So this is on the isolated branch, the demo branch. Okay. We have 20,000 records because we just added 10,000 records from our February sales data. But if I take a look at the query from the main branch, our main branch still only shows 10,000 records. So we can see that the change was isolated. It did not affect our main branch. Any data consumers currently querying are still only querying the data from before this work that we're doing. Okay. The beauty of this is that basically I can make sure that I can run my quality checks and audit the data before my consumers uh, consume it. Because why does that matter? Data quality means insight quality and insight quality means business value. Okay. It's the basically quality of our insights are going to be determined the business value we get from the decisions we make based on those insights. So we want to make sure our data is quality. So we want to make sure we have the processes so that we can manage that data quality so to give us the space to, to audit that data, the space to roll back any mistakes we make and so forth. Okay. So we did that. Okay. So we showed that now next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to run our checks. We're going to actually like audit the data. So I'm going to make sure that I'm still in my branch. Now go notice here, I'm not writing out the whole namespace. So see so in the previous script, I was writing out the whole namespace for each query. Okay. That's a lot of typing. Now, a nice thing about the Dremio UI is that what I can do is I can click over here where it says context and then set the context for which all the queries will be run. So in this case, I really want to set the context into that folder where these data sets exist. Okay. So I'll select that folder. Okay. And now I don't have to write out the whole namespace because when I just write out sales, it's going to assume that it's in the context that I specified. Okay. Which makes writing my queries a lot cleaner and a lot easier to reuse, especially when it's a script, because I can just switch the context as needed. Okay, so again, just a lot of these nice features in that Dremio UI experience. So in this case, I'm again switching to our branch. And then I'm going to do an uh, integrity check. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm running a check on what's the count of all the records in the sales table. Then I'm running a count of all the records that have a matching assistant and a matching customer. to Make sure that all these foreign key references actually have matches. Okay, I want to make sure there's no mistakes. We're going to do this twice. So first, I'm going to do it. And we're going to see that everything perfectly matches. Then we're going to intentionally insert a record that's not going to match. Insert a bad record. Okay. And then we're going to check the referential integrity again. And you're going to see that, uh oh, we have a problem. Okay. So let me make sure I set my cursor over here at the beginning. Okay. So that way it runs all the queries. I'm going to hit run. Let it run this, begin running those queries. Okay. And then we're going to see the results. So again, now we see we have the, the first count. Okay. So when I click here on the first count, we see that I have a fact sales count that means my total sales two thousand of twenty thousand and then the amount my referential integrity count so the ones that actually like have you know matching foreign foreign items okay also equals twenty thousand so everything perfectly matches meaning you know everything's good but now we and here in query three we added one record and now here in query four 
I do that count again, and now I notice, hey, like I have 20,001 records, but only 20,000 match. That record we just added doesn't have a match. We made a mistake. Okay. Now, normally, chances are you're making a mistake not just with one record, but with several records. And then you run into this whole problem of having to kind of determine, hey, what records may, were the problem? Okay. And having to go hunt them out and prune them out and fix that up, which can sometimes take hours of work. Okay. And then something's having to go back and backfill data. Well, thankfully, we're using Dremio Arctic. Okay. So I, it's just simple as me going and rolling back uh, or reverting and, you know, undoing the mistake that I've made. Okay. And the way I can do that is by using by basically changing the commit my branch is pointing towards I just have to find the commit ID that I want to go back to okay so here in this script we're gonna see that hey I, I switched I'm going I'm always making sure that I'm working from my my uh, staging branch okay I'm gonna do the referential integrity check again so that way you can see that the, there's still a problem then we're going to chain go back set that branch back to a previous commit so all I have to do is find the commit ID Okay, and I'll show you how easy that is in just a moment. Okay, and then we'll do the check again and see that we fixed the problem. So for me to find the commit ID, and this is one of the nice things about using Dremio Arctic, is that you have this nice UI to inspect your Arctic catalog. So if I go over here to my Arctic catalogs, open that up in a separate tab. Okay, I can go over here, take a look at the Arctic catalog that I'm currently working out of. And then here, I'm able to like switch branches, so I'll see which branch I'm inspecting. So I'll take a look at the branch that I'm currently looking to work out of. So here, uh, demo 2923. I'm going to say, hey, that's the branch I'm inspecting. I can see all the tables in the catalog in that from that branch. I can see all the commits from that branch's point of view, any tagged commits. Uh, I can take a look at all my branches and do like merging and, and, and create new branches all from here. But I can I know that the commit that I that 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 is the problem was my most recent one because that was the most recent change. So you see here, like that I put data to the sales table. That was me inserting that record. So really what I want to do, oops, I'm going to go back. Okay. What I want to do is go back one commit. So I'm going to copy, so that's basically, I want to not point here, but point here. So I'm going to copy this commit hash. So I just click copy commit hash. And then I can just plop that in right here. And I'm good to go. Now, of course, you want to always make sure that you're pointing at the right context. Okay, because again, I'm not typing out the full namespace. So I got to go make sure I set my context to point to the right place that the context of these, these particular tables are. Okay, so I got my good context. I'm pointing to the right commit hash. Everything looks good to go. Let me just make sure my cursor is right here at the beginning. So it runs all the queries. I hit run, and it's going to begin running the queries. So again, it's switching branches. It's going to do that referential integrity check. Okay, so when we take a look at the referential integrity check before we do the assign, we see that, hey, look, we still got the problem. Then we're going to assign the commit. So you see this was successful when I click on query three. And then when I click on query four, I see, oh, look, they match. Okay, the problem is gone. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so basically it was simple as that. I just went back and I just went back in time, back to when I know I have clean data, and now I can you know re-add the data um, correctly this time. Okay, no headache, no stress, and again during none of that time was that data exposed on the main branch, so no inconsistent, incorrect data was being exposed to our data consumers. Okay, so again the beauty of that isolation, the beauty of that version control. Uh, you know, making our life a lot easier, a lot less stress. But another really cool benefit of being able to isolate at the catalog level, okay, is that I can do transactions on multiple tables. So in this next script, what we need to do is we're going to go, we do have one assistant who just joined our staff at the very last minute, okay? They just literally joined the last few days, so they weren't reflected in the data that just came in, okay? So my list of assistants doesn't reflect this new hire. And they just did a job really on the last day of February. So that job wasn't reflected in the sales data. It was just the very last minute. Okay, they didn't get processed in time. So I'm gonna go manually add it in there. Okay. So I'm gonna go switch to the branch because again I want to do all my work on my branch, keep it isolated. And I'm gonna insert a record into the assistance table and then add the sale to the sales table. So that I have to edit two tables. And again, the, the, the change to the sales table depends on the change to the assistance table because because of that whole referential integrity. Now, again, if this were not isolated, then when I make the change to the assistance table, it could affect queries that are that are on the sales table um, and vice versa. OK, but this way I can make changes to both tables and then publish them all at the same time as just one big atomic commit. OK, 
This is also known as multi-table transactions, a pattern that previously was really only available to data warehouses. And again, another thing to point out, how nice is it for me to be able to do all this branching and merging straight from my SQL? So notice I haven't had to switch to a Python script or a Java, uh, a, a, you know, a, a, a Java jar or anything like that. I'm doing this all in SQL, straight from the Dremio UI, being able to switch branches. And it's the same thing if you were using Flink, same thing if you were using Spark, same thing if you were using Presto, you could do it all from your SQL. Okay, it's making basically this kind of data as code, this kind of, this level of engineering, much more accessible, uh, you know, to more people so you can get that work done. Okay, and they can all do it simultaneously from different tools. How cool is that? Um, okay, but basically we're going to add that record. Then we're going to make sure that we do our referential integrity check to make sure that everything still works. And um, again, I want to make sure that I always set my context because again, I'm not writing out the whole namespace. So I got to make sure I set the context properly. So I'm going to say Arctic into Arctic demo 2923, select. Okay, and now I'm going to make sure my cursor is at the beginning of the box. I'm going to hit run and let the queries run. Okay, and then here we go. It's switching branches. Okay, it's inserting those records. So I can see that the records were inserted successfully, or at least the first insertion. Now we're gonna see that the second insertion is gonna be done successfully, so there it is. Okay, and then it's gonna do that referential integrity check, and we'll be able to see that, hey, look, we still have referential integrity. Our data is still good. Okay, and we can see that right there, 20,001, 20,001, everything is a-okay okay and for the final stop in our tour okay i'm going to head over to uh you know publish our data so we're going to head over and what's going to happen is we're going to actually see again show you that the data is still isolated so before we do the merge i'm going to do a count on the sales table from both branches so you can see that hey look the, the main branch still only reflects 10,000 records and then what we're going to do is we're going to merge our staging branch into the main branch okay and then after we do that, we'll do the counts again. So you can see that afterwards, now they're in sync. Okay, all those changes have been brought over. They are now published for all my data consumers to consume. Okay, so again, I will make sure that we set the correct context. Okay, always make sure you do that if you're using uh, the abbreviated namespaces. Okay, so right there, select the name context. Make sure I put my cursor at the beginning of the, the box. I'm gonna hit run. And there it goes. It's gonna start running all those queries. Again, now I'm bringing and publishing all that data. So again, all I had to do was first write the data. I ingested the data, okay? I audited the data there from a branch, and then I published it by merging it back into my main branch, okay? And basically, this allowed me to have the peace of mind that no bad data is being queried by my data consumers. And again, just to kind of show that, so if I go over here and take a look at our first count, so in our staging branch at the beginning, we had 20,000 records. And in our main branch, we had 10,000 records. So that was before the merge. Now, after the merge, okay, our uh, demo branch had 20,001 records, and our main branch also has 20,001 records. Okay, so we have successfully published all that data after running our quality checks, you know, using version control to be able to revert to previous commits when we made mistakes, and make sure that we have high quality data provided to our data consumers so that way they can have high quality insights so that way they can provide business value okay which is always the end goal here provide business value business value comes from quality data and data quality comes from being able to use tools that give you the space and the mechanisms to be able to do that to manage that data quality so my name is alex Merced, developer advocate here dremio this has been a demonstration of the dremio arctic catalog again the dremio arctic catalog can be connected from multiple engines such as spark link presto and more along with dremio sonar again it's you can get a Dremio Arctic catalog at, at a click of a button right here on the Dremio cloud platform. So no harm to try it out today. It can make a big difference in your data quality and your the quality of your business insights. So have a great day. I'll see you all later.